Uh, you know, since you brought up Soviet industrialization just a little while ago, uh, I know you've long been interested in history in general, uh, peasant or agrarian histories particularly. Uh, I also note that you've recently published on uh, the agrarian questions in the Soviet Union. Why should we, at this point in time, go back to reading pre- and post-revolutionary Soviet history or Russian history? There are... Uh two reasons really. Um, one is uh, that the Soviet legacy is a terrible millstone around the socialist left and you don't need to be a, as it were, a paid up Trotskyist to, to, to observe that. Um, and a lot of that has to do with the course of the Russian Revolution from 1905 onwards and then uh, battles that were fought and choices that were made in the Soviet Union in the 1920s. And at one time I'd been quite familiar with those, uh, with literatures on that and materials and debates. And uh, I took the opportunity of a special issue of during the Peasant Studies um, it's uh, on, on the bicentenary of um, Marx's birth uh, to go back to that. And it's kind of very striking that Russian Revolution was almost mm. exactly in the middle between mm. Marx's birth and, and today. Um, and I reread all the work of Theodore Shanin, um, which was uh, extremely um, fruitful, and I read uh, and, and reread some of the. Uh, more recent literature, I couldn't cover it all, it was far too great. So I wanted to see what was at issue there. And it also reminded me that one of the great differences between the Russian Revolution and the Chinese Revolution, as many pe people pointed out, is that the Bolsheviks really had no social base in the countryside. Whereas the Chinese party did through the long um, struggle uh, for liberation against both Kuomintang, of course, and Japanese occupation. Um, so in a sense, I wanted to use the opportunity to clarify my own mind and also to shed some light on relationship between Marxist agrarian studies today and, and populism, mm. um, because that was you know, the, the original agrarian populists were all Russians um, from the sort of last four decades or so of the 19th century. Mm. So I did that. And the other point I want to make sort of follows on in a way is, and, and I mentioned this towards the end of that mm. piece uh, I wrote recently or published recently, and which I haven't really yet had any reactions to from uh, my comrades, it goes back to an observation that Terry Byers and I made in our review of uh, three decades of Journal of Peasant Studies, which we published in the first issue of Journal of Agrarian Change, mm -hmm. which is that for all the rich material that we published on Russia and then the Soviet Union, mostly 1890s to 1920s, including translations of uh, pieces by Chinoff that hadn't been translated before, there was almost nothing on agriculture in the Soviet period. And why was that? Is it because it was too uncomfortable? People wanted to back away from it? Uh, was it that some Marxists thought that uh, Stalin's collectivization, everything followed was vicious, ugly, mistaken in some respects, but nonetheless successful in laying the agrarian foundations for Soviet industrialization. So bearing that in mind, I said towards the end of that piece that where would we look to models, successful examples of socialist agriculture? And um, it's pretty difficult. You know, there have been moments. Um, China, perhaps, and it's very striking that 
those people uh, loosely called the Chinese New Left are looking back at the history of communes in China as agricultural industrial complexes and um, uh, also providers of, of social infrastructure and social protection. They're looking back at aspects of those to see if something can be retrieved from that. And we have other experiences in Cuba, Nicaragua, uh, and so on. Vietnam, until it also disbanded the communes. There's not very much, though, which one can say. So I think it was uh, an alarmingly blind spot or blind face of the Marxist tradition of agrarian studies that we've been talking about, um, that it largely ignored Soviet experience of state farms and collective farms, and was on the whole um, not able to project very much in the way of an alternative model. And that's, of course, where the um, populists are very strong, I would say, ideologically, if not necessarily analytically, is their idea of the peasant community, which itself resonates the debate around the Mir, the Russian yes, peasant yes. commune in the late 19th century, Marx's comments which were invited by the yeah. populists of the time, yes. you know, and which um, Theodor Shanin collected into that well-known book, uh, Late Marx and the Russian Road. Yeah.